You are my limit, my only limit. You make me happy when you exist. You never know, dear, how much you puzzle me when you go to infinity. Alright, so what we're going to study in this video is infinite limits and the related concept of vertical asymptotes for the graph of a function. Okay, so let me start with an example. Suppose that you're interested in calculating the limit as x goes to 5 of the function x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 25. Well, the first thing you may want to do to understand better the function is to simplify it. So x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 25, how can I rewrite this? Well, you can notice that the denominator is a difference of squares, so I can rewrite it as x minus 5 times x plus 5. And then what you see is that this function is well defined for all x except at two points, namely where x is equal to 5, in which case this would become infinite, it would blow up, or as x goes to minus 5 where I get 0 over 0. Now, if x is not equal to minus 5, however, I can divide both upstairs and downstairs by x plus 5, and I'll get a simpler expression. So I get that the function is equal to 1 over x minus 5, but that's true only if x is not equal to minus 5 or to 5, where this would blow up, and if the function is actually undefined at these two points, x is equal to 5, minus 5, or 5. Okay, so with this in mind, now I can sketch a graph of the function. So there's going to be two special things happening at five, minus 5 and 5 because the function is not defined at these points. And if I just sketch the graph, I'll get a hole on minus 5. But at 5, I'll get a different behavior. So I'll draw a vertical line here. We'll see why in a second. I'll get something like this. So what this is saying is that as x approaches 5 from the left side, the function becomes bigger and bigger but negative. While if x approaches 5 from the right side, then the function bigger, becomes bigger and bigger but positive. So if I come back to uh, my limit here, well, the first thing you notice is that you should treat both, -sided, uh, the both one sided limits separately. So you should really ask about first the left sided limit and then the right sided limit. So what is the value of the left sided limit as x approaches 5? Well, we see that basically the function becomes bigger and bigger and negative. So what does that mean? So this is not a finite value. Uh, so we can't really make sense of this limit yet. But we will see in the next slide how to define such limits. What we will write is that the limit k is equal to minus infinity. And I'll define what this means in a second. And for the right-hand side here, we would write that the limit is equal to plus infinity because the value of the function becomes bigger and bigger as x approaches 5 from the right-hand side. So let me now define infinite limits mathematically. So we write this expression here and say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is infinity if the values of f of x can be made arbitrarily large and positive by taking x sufficiently close to a on either side of a but not equal to a. And similarly we can write this expression here and say the limit of f of x as x approaches a is negative infinity if the values of f of x can be made arbitrarily large but in this case negative. Now this is the, for the full limits, but we can also define one-sided limits appropriately, like we had in the previous example. And in fact, for infinite limits, it's very, very important that you check that you get the same answer on both sides of the limit, because pretty often you'll get, say, infinity on one side and minus infinity on the other side, or so things like that. Okay, so let me work through a number of examples. So suppose that you first calculate the limit as x goes to 0 of the function 1 over x squared. So let me first try to do it without sketching the graph of the function. So how can we evaluate this limit? So we need to check both the left-sided limit and the right-sided limit to make sure they're the same. So I would calculate the left side limit here of 1 over x squared. So what that means is that I bring x close to 0 but negative. So I take x to be a very, very small but negative number. What would this look like? Well, if x is very small but negative, x squared is going to be very small but positive. So what I get is 1 over a very, very small but positive number. So you can try it, 1 over 0 0.0001 or whatever. This becomes arbitrarily large. This becomes a very, very, very big and positive number. So the limit here becomes infinity, positive infinity. 
if I take li limit as x goes to 0 plus, then x is arbitrarily small but positive, so x squared is also very small but positive, so 1 over x squared is very large and positive, so I also get infinity. So the limit here is indeed infinity. And we can check that it works by looking at the graph of the function. So what does the function look like in this case? 1 over x squared, we can check. It's going to look like something like this. So as x goes to 0, on either side, uh, the function blows up to infinity. All right. But that's not always the case. So let's look now at the case where one-sided limits are different. So let's look at the limit as x goes to 3 negative of the function 2x over x minus 3. Okay, so what happens in this case? Well, as s goes to 3, the numerator here will go to 6, which is just a finite number. But the denominator here, so I take x to be very close to 3, but just a little smaller than 3. So x minus 3 is going to be a very small but negative number, because x is just a tiny bit smaller than 3. So I get 6 over a very, very small but negative number. So that will become very, very large but negative, so minus infinity. While the limit as x goes to 3 plus of 2x over x minus 3, so what happens here, so the numerator still goes to 6, but in this case I take x to be just a tiny bit bigger than 3. So x minus 3 would be a very, very small but positive number. So I get 6 over a very small positive number, that gives me plus infinity. So you see now the two limits are not the same. So the limit as x goes to 3 of the function here, I would write that it does not exist because uh, the two one-sided limits are not equal. And let's sketch the graph here just to make sure that it makes sense. So it turns out that this function would look like, so 3 is here, just going to draw a little vertical line here. The function would look like something like this, going through 0, so it goes to the origin, and going like this. Right, so indeed, if I approach 3 here from the left side, it goes down to minus infinity, while if I approach on the right side, it becomes arbitrarily large or positive, so it goes to plus infinity. Okay, so I keep drawing these little vertical lines here on, in my graphs. So what are those? So those are called vertical asymptotes. So let me now define what vertical asymptotes are. So the line x equals to a is called the vertical asymptote of the curve y equals to f of x if either the left-sided limit goes to plus or minus infinity or the right-sided limit goes to plus or minus infinity, or both. So it's important to note that the function does not have to blow up on both sides of the line for it to be a vertical asymptote. As long as it blows up on one side, we call it a vertical asymptote. So my previous example was the function 2x over x minus 3. So I sketched the graph of the function on the previous slide. What I obtained was something like that. So I had a vertical dashed line at x equals to 3. And my function looked like this here. And the left-sided limit here as x goes to 3 goes to minus infinity, while the right-sided limit is plus infinity. So what we would say in this case is that x equals to 3 is a vertical asymptote of the function, or perhaps more precisely, of the graph of the function, so of y equals to 2x over x minus 3. And in terms of the graph, we denote vertical asymptote with vertical dashed lines. So let me end this video with a brief comment on existence of limits. We say that a limit exists if it's equal to L, but importantly, if L is a finite number. So L equals to 0 is perfectly fine because it's a finite number. But with this in mind, there's two reasons why a limit may not exist. The first one is if the left-sided and right-sided limits are different. So if those are not equal, then the limit does not exist, and we write that the limit dNe does not exist. But there's another reason, which is when the limit is infinite. So in this case, we're going to write that the limit is equal to plus or minus infinity. But you have to keep in mind that uh, infinity is not a finite number, so this limit still does not exist. So if, for example, I ask you, whether the limit of a function exists at a certain point, then the answer will be yes only if the limit is a finite number. So if the limit happens to be infinity, then the limit does not exist.